to identify a large group of women with lichen plantar pilaris, which is a form of scarring or cicatricial alopecia, and learn more about these women and, and what uh, symptoms they present with, how long it takes to make these diagnoses, as well as some of the treatment options. My name is Stan Tolkachov, and I'm the director of Mohs Micrographic and Reconstructive Surgery of 15 Dermatology in Dallas, Texas. Uh, on this project, we work with a group from the Mayo Clinic who are very dedicated uh, to treating patients with hair disorders, including lichen plantar pilaris, as well as frontal fibrosing and alopecia. The group included the primary author, Sydney Proper, as well as Hafsa Cantwell, Lise Imhoff, Rochelle Torgerson, and myself. We did a retrospective review of women seen in the Mayo Clinic from 1992 to 2016 with lichen plantar pilaris. We identified 232 women. Lichen plantar pilaris is a scarring form of hair loss or alopecia. It's most commonly seen in women, and the average age has been reported is around 48 years. The range of ages reported is 25 years old to about 70 years old. 31% of these women had um, thyroid disease, and hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid hormone, has been reported in women with scarring alopecia, including lichen plantar pilaris as well as frontal fibrosing alopecia, which is often regarded as a subtype of lichen plantar pilaris. After reviewing the patients that we found in our search in the Mayo Clinic database, uh, we identified 232 patients that met the criteria for lichen plantar pilaris. Uh, out of these patients, we looked at their photographs, we looked at their biopsy results, and their uh, charts, their histories, uh, and looked for associated disorders, such as autoimmune conditions. And we also looked at treatment algorithms and what was used and also to see how well these patients did in the long term, which is often difficult to do at a tertiary academic center such as the Mayo Clinic. However, um, with good record keeping and good follow-up, this is very, very helpful uh, to see how patients do. Something that was very unique in our findings is the difference between the patients that had the frontal fibrosing alopecia, which we've reported previously, and the patients here we have the lichen plantar pilaris. Uh, the patients with lichen plantar pilaris, they were a younger population of patients and also had less uh, hormonal findings, such as hormone replacement therapy, as well as abdominal hysterectomy. Interestingly, a history of depression and anxiety were seen in 45 and 42% of women, respectively. Clinically, women with lichen plantar pilaris present with a hair loss, usually the vertex of their scalp. There's tenderness, there's scarring hair loss. There's some itch and also some scaling. So this can often be uh, confused with seborrheic dermatitis or plain dandruff. Uh, but once you look at a scalp of somebody with lichen plantar pilaris, uh, you often see that scarring hair loss, the shiny areas. And you also see the scale and the redness around follicles. The reason for lichen plantar pilaris is not fully understood. Uh, we do think that it's an autoimmune condition and it is associated with other autoimmune conditions like hypothyroidism. Uh, and when we do a biopsy of the hair follicle uh, and of the scalp, we often see the inflammation of T cells called lymphocytes that actually attack the uh, hair follicle at a certain region, which helps us make the diagnosis of lichen plantar pilaris. In some of our other studies, we've reported patients with a disease called frontal fibrosing alopecia or hair loss in the areas of the temples, the eyebrows, and the frontal scalp um, that typically are considered as part of the lichen plantar pilaris spectrum. Um, however, uh, we separated these patients out out of our search just to make sure that we focus on women with lichen plantar pilaris. Um, and so the patients with frontal fibrosing alopecia have been reported elsewhere. Uh, however, uh, patients that have the frontal fibrosing alopecia are typically uh, older, although not always, uh, and have uh, more history associated with hormone replacement therapy and uh, menopause. In our patient population, the average age of diagnosis was about 59 or 60 years old, which is somewhat older, about 10 years older than the patients that have been reported in literature. 44% of these patients had vertex or crown um, hair loss in a scarring distribution. Lichen plantar pilaris has often been associated with another type of lichenoid uh, dermatosis, uh, and that means it's a rash that has a almost a purplish look to it and often is very itchy uh, and can be all over the body, including the oral cavity. Um, and so about 18% of patients in our study had oral lichen planus. 
Interestingly, the peripheral body hair was involved in 53% of our patients. Other autoimmune conditions, such as celiac disease and inflammatory bowel disease, were also seen with these patients. Interestingly, two of the women seen in our study did have also systemic lupus erythematosus, uh, and this can also cause a scarring alopecia that clinically looks similar to lichen planar polaris. Uh, but in these patients, the clinical pathological correlation, the appearance of the tissue on biopsy, uh, really allowed us to show that these patients truly had lichen planar polaris as well as systemic lupus and not just hair loss from lupus itself. To summarize, this is the second largest study that's been done on women with lichen planar polaris. Uh, the typical woman that presents with lichen planar polaris is a patient that has hair loss, mostly in the vertex scalp. Um, if you look at the scalp, it usually has some scarring alopecia redness around the hair follicles, scale around the hair follicles. These patients may have associated autoimmune conditions. Close to a third of these patients actually have vulvar or oral lichen planus, as well as half of these patients have body lichen planus. Half of these patients have other autoimmune conditions. Screening for anxiety, depression, sleep disturbances may be prudent in patients with lichen planus polaris. Treatments of these patients often requires uh, systemic therapy as well as topical therapy. Usually combination therapy has been shown to be the best, uh, and this was the case in our patient population. Hydroxychloroquine uh, was a medication that many of these patients took, uh, and if there was disease stabilization, this usually required 13 months uh, to stabilize. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.